This week's channel message from the angels is describing the change that is right on the horizon that we are going through and about to go through and telling us that there may be periods of difficulty. And here they are giving us a signpost in the darkness, telling us how to go through it. So welcome back to my channel, you guys. For those of you who are near, new here, my name is Anne Tucker. I'm a trance channel. That means I go into a deep meditative state. And from there, I raise my awareness up as high as I can go, a little higher. I connect. And then the angels come through with messages and healing that I share with you guys here on YouTube. And this week's message is talking about, they've been giving us a week by week kind of play by play description, helping us to understand the change that humanity is going through in this great shift in consciousness, bringing us into harmony, balance between the masculine and feminine selves that are within each of us. And they are in this particular message telling us that, that even though we crave change, even though we think we love change, when we get it, we don't always like it. And they're saying, when we get to that space where we suddenly feel like, wait a minute, this is not what I had in mind. I want to turn back. They say that is the moment to turn into, lean into the unknown and they will catch us. They will help us. But the temptation is going to be to turn back. So, so they're helping us to understand what is, how it's going to unfold, how we're going to feel and what we can do uh, about it. If you are not yet part of my email list, I don't send a whole lot of emails. I send like one a month, <laughs> but it is a great way for us to stay in touch just in case YouTube is never excited about sharing my videos. <laughs> so if you would like to be on that list, it just guarantees it down the road. If anything should happen, I will still be able to email you links to videos. And that email list, I will put a link to be able to sign up for my email list in the description box below. All right, you guys, hope you enjoy the video. So let's go ahead and dig into the message. Um, and like I said, if you're having a hard time following this one, do not worry. We will go back and break it down. This one took time for me to go through to really understand it. Um, but once I did now, it's, it's crystal clear. So, all right, so let's get into it. They say, we entrain you to the belief in ourselves. We draw in a sensation of our light. The elegance draws near of this time of incarceration where the humans drawn down into the perception of themselves as fleeting become nimble and light and fall down into the graceful belonging with one another. The endings become similar to what you've known, the drawings down and discarding of things you have no need of, a sense of self as improving, digesting, relinquishing that which holds you down. The incarcerated times of yesteryear, the triple fold ineffectualism of the human stance, against nature and with yourselves, all in a world of tumult and chaos. This becomes parted and inured with a sense and vibration of ourselves. The light penetrates you deeply and you feel yourselves illuminated from within. This is coming yet. You feel it in the distance and yet it comes nearer still. There will be a time in the period of this next instantiation within which you feel yourself called to be below the shield of your own folly in nature, to relinquish that, to relinquish what this has yielded, to return to what you know, to draw back in like a snail in a shell and find solace in the comfort of yesteryear. These times will come again and you will feel yourself lulled into the shade and respite of these gale force winds which overtake you now. For though they feel so familiar, though they feel light with an air of the familiar, they are in fact the blowback of your nature, the return to stasis, the desire for similarity which comes on like a shield from ourselves and draws out our better callings. We wish for the selves to be aware of these times and their coming, that you will find yourselves to feel that all that was lost can be found, that all that is now and is heralded as same can once again be returned to. And in that stance, you will make for yourselves a new bed where the old one lay. We say these times forthcoming will not yield to those endeavors. These times that are coming will not make way for the plans and dreams of yesteryear. They will make yourself whole in concept and energy, but not in the practical nature of life itself. It will manifest as it will 
in the world which provides itself and yields for you a truth about who you are and what you desire and what you feel these will were always remain in your lifetime but the ineffectual but the effectuality will change and this cannot be avoided thus we say as you reach the turning point for humanity and sense the change upon the horizon and feel the self leaning in in a desire for something that is not this and seek in the respite of something else a transition that proves your own justice we say those temptations fall away and you are left with the curmudgeons of your better nature a sense of yourselves as having lost something and wishing to go back feeling that within these parts of this shift in your perception there must be something like it was and perhaps all can return to a semblance of normalcy we would hold the self in comfort and dialogue with spirit and pray into you each to hold on to the depth of your own knowing to keep for yourself on guard against the desire to slump and return to what was to hold the stead and maintain your grip upon what is new and stay within reach of ourselves do not deny the force of the gale that returns to you that draws you backward into its reach but instead accept that you are this that you have need for comfort that you seek and desire a return but do not yield to admit not defeat but simply renew your faith in the truth of what you are and become like ourselves merging with that higher power that is your own light come into the depth of the experience come higher and farther than you previously knew it is there to be found the truth that you seek the desire will be revealed when the time has come for you to plunge into the darkness of your own fruition and to feel the self carried forward from here there is space yet to be endeavored to be broken to be left behind there is space yet for all that is wreckage to be counted there is space yet for all to be healed all misery to be let go of thus we hold you now in this point of transition and allow you the grace and time to yield to feel that you are in the presence of something greater than what you are which is yourself alone All right. So yeah, I mean, super, super, super cool message. <laughs> super cool message. And it takes some breaking down. This one does. I feel I, to me, it's like reading it now. It's clear, but I know the first time I read this and maybe it was just because I still had channeling brain, but it just felt it was for me. It was hard. I had to spend time with it to really get it. So uh, maybe you guys got it like that. Um, but for me, it, it took a little time. So I'm excited to break it down with you because I feel there's just a lot of richness in this message. And I think, like I said, if I had to, and you're saying this resonates with me so much, that's super cool, Georgie. You say very reassuring. Awesome, Mary. Uh, Mike says, I'm anticipating the shooting of the arrow of a great flowing into the new dream for humanity. Beautifully said, Mike. Um, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so I feel like what this message is really about in a nutshell is they're saying that as we are heading into what's coming, it's really, really easy to talk about what's coming from a space where we are right now, which is where everything is, is the way we've expected it to be. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we're currently in the, the safety and security of, of what we've always known. And so from here, it's really easy to be like, yeah, I'm totally on board. This is awesome. Sweep me away. And then the added little tidbit they add here, which I think is so helpful and true about human nature is that from this lovely place of security from wherever we are right now which is at least the known right maybe life isn't perfect right now but it's known to be able to say okay i want something other than this like if we're stuck in karma if we're dealing with difficulty it's easy to say i want you know anything but this it's that whole idea of change i always think it's amazing in like in politics a lot of times you'll hear them talk about change, 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 and they never say to what. <laughs> it's just that the concept of change sells. The idea of something other than what is. Like, oh, this is so bad, anything other than this. 
and they don't actually nail down specifically what it is that they're going to deliver. It's just something else. And I think they're identifying that feeling that humans that we have, which is like, just give me, just get me out of here. Get me out of here. This is terrible. I want something else. Right. And they're saying, okay, we start out, we come into this experience with that sensation of like, give me change. And then we get into the hard stuff and it's like, whoa, wait a minute. I didn't mean this change, right? I didn't mean all the things that are hard about this change. I just wanted something better. And I think that is what they're trying to identify here, that we're going to go through this period of like, yeah, I'm in, bring me change. And then change happens and we say, whoa, hold on. I don't like that change. And then they're saying, this is the point that when we get to that place, they're saying that is the moment when we need to plunge forward. As they describe it, I love how they say something like jump into the darkness of our fruition, which is that is a potent poetic phrase, isn't it? Like the darkness of our fruition, which implies like we don't know where we're going. Like we don't know how we're blossoming. Like, wow. You know what I mean? It's super, super cool. Um, And uh, you're saying, well, I have no clue what it means. (laughs) Thank you for your honesty, Karen. And I would say I second that feeling before I had time to spend with it. So you are not alone. But now I get it and you will too. So uh, Brian is saying, I just yesterday told my sad husband I felt I was slipping back into my old self. A great temptation indeed. Yeah, who doesn't like feeling comfortable as opposed to continuously facing the unknown? Yeah, that's you totally nailed it. Absolutely. You're saying, oh, so scary when change is undefined. Yeah, right? And that is the dharmic path. Like that is what we're trying to move into. And it is not easy. The, the dharmic path is is... Like I, I've said before, it's like in dreams, they show it as like you're on a roller coaster and it's crazy, like crazy, crazy ride on the roller coaster. And then a big chunk of track is making, missing and you have to just, just go, right? You have to just go without any track. There's no track anymore. That's what dharmic means. So it's extremely undefined. Yeah. And, and we have to get comfortable with that. And it is not in our nature. We have to conquer our human nature. And that is, that is, and yes, we want to be in flow with nature and love nature, but our, <laughs> the, the part of us that says, give me safety, let me hide that part of it. We have to rise above that and be the knowing self that says, no, I am all things. And all of this changes that I'm the master of my own destiny because I am in flow with the divine. Yeah. So let's break it down. Um, and I mean, saying, be mindful of what we ask for from the angels. <laughs> Totally. I want change. Oh, wait, not that change. (laughs) Totally. Okay. All right. So here we go. Let's go ahead and break it down. And this will become, once you get this, then you'll be like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. But it's just the way they said it in this time. I think the way they did it, it's, it's in the interest of poetry, but it's also trying to really emphasize how strong this feeling is going to be. And I think they're trying to tell us, hey, we may feel like we are so on the path and we are so committed, but they're saying, don't underestimate the power of this. And I think that's why they're saying it this way, but that the way they did it makes it a little bit hard to follow. So, all right, so here's what they say. They say, we entrain you, which is, an, and the word entrain means to draw along uh, with or after itself. So imagine like a train with all the cars behind it. And, and, uh, and it also, uh, draw, so um, uh, to draw something in and transport it, which I love because the angels are trying to draw us into their energy and transport us into a higher frequency, into a new aspect of ourselves, into this balanced harmony that we're trying to embody. So we entrain you, right? We draw you in and transport you, right? In, uh, to the belief in ourselves. We draw in, and here's what's amazing. I love this. They write, they said, we entrain you to the belief in ourselves. We draw in a sensation of our light. And right in by the Webster's Dictionary, they say, draw in and transport. I was like, oh, they knew it. It's so cool. We draw in a sensation of our light. The elegance draws near of this time of incarceration, where the humans, drawn down into the perception of, the, of themselves as fleeting, become nimble and light and fall down into the graceful belonging with one another. So this is really a very good like preview of what's coming in the message. So they say we, we are, uh, the elegance draws near of this time of incarceration. So I've been seeing a lot of people talking about that recently, about are humans imprisoned, incarcerated in the earth? Like is this, people talk about that. And I don't think they mean literally that this is a a prison, but we have been imprisoned by the veil in a sense. We have been um, held down, held back on purpose so that we could confront ourselves. 
and it has been you know a process that change comes from pain right so it has been difficult but they're saying the elegance draws near so they're saying yes you've been through this difficult time but it is for a purpose and the elegance of this design like the reason for being of this design why was this created in the first place to help us evolve so the ele elegance of that incarceration draws near Say so we're humans, which we what we have been is drawn down into the perception of ourselves as fleeting. In other words, thinking of ourselves as not eternal, not understanding our divinity, right? Not understanding that. They say we become nimble and light and fall down into the graceful belonging with one another. And I like that they use the word fall down. They're not saying fall up. They're saying fall down. And I think that is alluding to this idea that the concept of going into... Uh, um, this growth, this dharmic, this idea of dharma is to take a leap, to take a plunge, to fall. It feels like darkness because it is undefined. So there, it's it's a and it's graceful. It's a graceful fall. It's like the Nesky plunge. You just let yourself fall backward into. The, and if you don't know that, I'm dating myself. <laughs> it's that idea of just letting it go. The trust fall, right? You just trust fall down into the graceful belonging with one another. So okay, next paragraph. They say the endings become similar to what you've known. So the endings of this period of incarceration where we've been stuck behind the veil confronting ourselves, the endings become similar to what we've known. Uh, the drawings down and discarding of things, you, and drawings down here means like, imagine pulling things down and letting them go into the earth. So it's like, it's purging, right? Discarding of things you have no need of. A sense of self as improving, digesting, relinquishing that which holds you down. So these are the endings that we're going through right now as we're trying to confront all of the aspects of ourselves that need healing. Right? The incarcerated times of yesteryear, and they say the triple-fold ineffectualism of the human stance. So they're saying the triple-fold means there are three ways in which we have been ineffectual. <laughs> three ways that we've been living that have not worked for us. And they say those three are, number one, the human stance, number one, against nature, where we've been in a battle with nature as opposed to flowing with nature. Number two, and with yourselves, where we have been fighting ourselves. Number three, they say, all in a world of tumult and chaos. So we've been fighting nature, ourselves, and the world. <laughs> yeah, three, triple-fold ineffectualism of human stance, right, the human stance. So that is what we've been in. That, that is a description of the incarcerated times of yesteryear where we've been confronting ourselves and fighting. It's been, and I like this idea that it's, it's, we've been in a stance against everything because all of this entire period of human awareness that we've been going through, this human existence we've been going through, has been a period of resistance to what we, to what we are, right? We've been in resistance and that resistance then projects whatever the, it is that we are out into the world and we experience it. But so it has been a stance against is like, in, you know, if you just had to sum it up very beautifully there, we have been in a stance against which creates resistance, which we then experience in the world around us. Yeah. All right. They go on to say um, this becomes parted and inured, inured. Um, uh, so they're saying, OK, this past experience becomes parted. Right. It's like imagine, you know, Moses parting the sea. Like it's all of a sudden a way becomes clear. It becomes parted. So a way is made clear. And I think that the moment of parting, I think, is this big light that's supposed to be coming. That I think this is the thing that brings in the light that parts this old way of being, this old stance of resistance. And they say, and to become inured means to be means inured means to become of advantage. So in other words, if we are, if all of these, this, the way that we have been, the difficulty we've been living in, we become, becomes inured, then it means that it, we, it, they help us to make good of our, out of our hardship. So it becomes an advantage rather than a disadvantage. So, so that is what they're talking about here. So, so all of that difficulty of the stance that we've had against nature and ourselves in the world, this actually, we are able to take all that hardship and turn it around and make it an advantage to our own growth. So it becomes parted and inward, right? Parted, it means moved away and we claim the benefit of it. And they say with a sense and vibration of ourselves. So that is the light that's coming in. The light, here they talk about it, the light penetrates you deeply and you feel yourselves illuminated from within. This is coming yet. You feel it in the distance and yet it comes nearer still. If you missed the message about this light that's coming, I think it was two weeks ago, 
Uh, if you look back on the YouTube list and you go back two weeks, you should see it there. Um, and it, they talk all about this. It's supposed to be like the moment that I think the title is something like it's it's a the moment that where everything changes. It's like the moment where we can look back at it and say it was here that everything changed. So that is their light they're talking about. They're referring to it again here, which I love. I love when they're consistent like this and they they're con it's like one story and they're giving us a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, you know, but it all ties together. All right, so, uh, so next paragraph, they say, um, there will be a time in the period of this next instantiation within which you feel yourselves called to be below the shield of your own folly and nature. So in other words, they're saying that, that right now we are able to rise above our fears and the hesitancies we might have and the unknown, we're able to rise above it and say, oh yeah, I'm totally ready for this, bring it on. But they said there will be a time when we don't have that strength or that we feel less sure of ourselves and we want to go back below the shield, right, of our folly and nature, of the nature, meaning the nature is to, to, um, to, to cling and to resist and to all these things, to seek safety is our nature. Right, so that so there'll be a time where we feel called to go back below it, to feel to feel lulled back into desiring a sense of safety as opposed to this big shift. And they say to relinquish what, what this has yielded. So what I like about this is they're saying, okay, we're gonna be feel called to let go of the gains that we've made. But what I love is they're saying gains have been made. So they're they're saying that at the time that this comes over us, this feeling of like, oh my gosh, this is not what I expected, I wanna go back. <laughs> They say that at that moment, we will have already made significant progress. So I, I find that to be really encouraging. Um, and Mike is saying, for me, imprisoned in the seven bodily energies at this point, we are moving into our greater auric field for our deeper universe. This is how I see the light. I am journeying homeward. That's beautiful. I love it. Um, so they're saying we will be tempted to relinquish what we've gained, to return to what you know, to draw back in like a snail in a shell, and find solace in the comfort of yesteryear. They say these times will come again and you will feel yourselves lulled into the shade and respite of these gale force winds which overtake you now. So they're saying um, that, that, that the energy of this, the feelings of this, like that, that when this comes over us, it is not a little bit. <laughs> it is gale force winds. That there will be a time when it's like, holy cow, what did we sign up for? And they're and they're describing it. And and the interesting thing is is and, and that holy cow, what did we sign up for? I, I want to move back into what things were. And I think as they're describing this, that there will be a pause. It'll be almost like we have this big event and it'll be like, holy cow, what is this? And then there'll be a period from what they're just I mean, the way I take it, and this is how I feel into it is that it's almost like there'll be a period where we can feel like, oh, let's just rebuild. Let's just, you know, you know what? Yeah, that was crazy. Wow, what a wild ride. Okay, let's all go back to the way we were now. Let's all pretend that didn't happen. You know what I mean? Like that will be the opportunity. And they're saying that that will feel like the shade and respite, right? That, that it will be a chance to go back to something that feels familiar. And we will be incredibly tempted to do that is what they're saying. Um, and the temptation, right? Gale force winds, which overtake you now. Um, they go on to say, for though they feel so familiar, though they feel light with an air of the familiar, they are in fact the blowback of your nature. So it is, it is that, you know, two steps forward, one step back. It is that, and that blowback feels really, really strong. And I think they're really trying to emphasize it so we don't underestimate it. So that when it happens, we say, ah, this is what they're talking about. And I understand why I feel this way. And it is okay. Right, I'm not doing it wrong. I'm not losing my edge or whatever it is, right? It means this is just the natural part of going through this while in a human experience. So, yeah. And they go on to say, uh, to re the return to stasis, to the desire for similarity, which, co which comes on like a shield from ourselves and drowns out our better calling. So that desire for the familiar, if we sink into that, if we allow ourselves to succumb to that desire, then it creates a shield between us and the angels, and we are no longer able to hear what's being called to us, right? We're no longer able to tune into the way that we're being shown to move forward, right? So interesting. And Rebecca saying, like, like coming in at a powerful idea of being overcome by gale force winds. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, uh, so they go on to say, um, we wish for the selves to be aware of these times and their coming. 
that you will find yourselves to feel that all that was lost can be found, that all that is now and is heralded as same can once again be returned to. And in that stance, you will make for yourselves a new bed where the old one lay. So this is saying what the temptation will be. It'll be literally like, oh, guess what? My house blew down. I'm going to just build the same exact house where the old one was and pretend like nothing happened. And that will be the desire. <laughs> so they're kind of calling us and yet this is, this is humans. This is what it is to be embodied. And it makes sense because our human nature is to seek safety and to seek what is known because life in terms of like just the survival nature of being in a fleshy human body, you know, we, we want to stick with what, what feels safe. Right, putting ourselves out there and exposing ourselves feels, uh, it feels scary, right? And that's, that is just the part of many, 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 many eons of being eaten by other things. <laughs> uh, and you're saying we are always trying to control the ambiguity. Yes, right? And Brandy's saying maybe interpreted as feeling like a kind of breather, a, a respite from what uh, we've been experiencing on our journey. Yeah, I think that that's what we'll feel like. I think it'll be like a little breather. And then we, in that time period, we will be like, oh great, now is the time to just keep on keeping on and pretend this isn't happening. And they're saying that is not the time to do that. That is in fact an opportunity to plunge into our path forward, right? And I think that's why um, you're saying, so we're not supposed to rebuild our house or what? <laughs> I, think, I think rebuild it differently. I think it's when it, when it, and that's not saying our actual house is gonna blow down, but they're saying that when this experience happens, we are meant to see in that pause moment to listen, like to take the absence as a time to tune in and to listen to where is the opening for us to move differently. And the desire will be, I want to see safety. I want to see comfort. I'm just going to go back and rebuild what was. And they're saying, don't do that. They're saying instead lean into the opening and recognize that this pause is actually a stillness where you can hear them better and find your way forward faster. And I think that's the reason for the message. Yeah. So they say, we say these times forthcoming will not yield to those endeavors. So in other words, if we try to do it, if we try to just lay in the same old bed, we try to do things the same old way, it won't work. So they're saying these times that are coming will not make way for the plans and dreams of yesteryear. So, and that's, that's because it's, we're shifting from an era where it's been this period where the masculine, divine masculine has been the leading energy and divine feminine has been the subordinate energy and we're moving towards a period where and that means the energy within us that each of us has divine masculine and divine feminine and we have been raised and taught things within a society that has valued the divine masculine energy more than the divine feminine and we are now shifting that to this and so if we try to return to a place where we're trying to lead with our with our masculine all the time and we're not bringing in the feminine, it won't work because the world is changing and it won't support like, and here's the big thing is that everything is supposed to start with the divine feminine, that we have to start the, the divine feminine is the way shower is the, is the way we receive our guidance. It's the divine, the divine feminine sh finds the way and, and makes the choice of what to do. And if we don't, if we don't tune in to that, if we still try to lead with the divine masculine, that's where we're going to fall down, right? Because they say the world isn't going to support it. And you're saying it is the divine masculine that we are leading with. When we think about how we make decisions nowadays, we analyze to death. We get data, you know, big data. The more data, the better. As much data as possible. And we analyze, analyze, analyze. That is the divine masculine. And it has its place for sure, right? Information is really helpful, but only when it comes after the divine feminine, which is the, that intuitive nudge of like, this is what you should do. So we're supposed to lead the divine feminine comes in and says, here's the path. And then divine masculine is supposed to show up and say, great, that's the path. Now I'm going to use my logic and my reasoning to find the best way to get there. Right. That's how they were supposed to work together. But if we skip the divine feminine part and say, okay, I'm just going to just lead with my divine masculine. And I'm just going to look at uh, I'm going to analyze and find all the options and I'm going to break each one down. I'm going to create a spreadsheet and compare, 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 compare. That's leading with the divine masculine. And they're saying that won't work anymore because it has to be from the feminine. It has to be, has to be this connection, which is strengthened. Yeah. And you're saying, is that divine? It feels more toxic. No, it, it's divine. It's divine when used properly. And when, when used in everything can be toxic when used without balance. 
Like we are meant to be in balance. So every the divine feminine becomes toxic when it's in its subordinate nature. And the divine masculine is toxic when it's, in, when it's standing over, right? When they're next to each other, they both come into balance and they work together in this really lovely way. So, yeah. Yeah, so that it's, it is... Like I think if you think of a divine expression and then that, that, that when it, when it's come, when it becomes overused, anything that's overused, even in your own body, if you get out of balance in your own body and you have one hormone that you have way too much of, that's toxic. So it's not, there's no judgment in it. It's just, we have too much of it. It doesn't mean it's inherently bad. We need it. We absolutely need it. We just don't need so much of it. <laughs> we want it to come back into balance. Yeah. And, um, uh, and you're saying, I certainly agree with the balance that, that it is the most critical. Yeah. And I believe that is the whole point of this shift is to try to bring us into harmony, right? Where we're trying to create harmony within humanity, within ourselves. Um, all right. So then they go on to say, um, uh, we say, okay, that these times that are coming will not make way for the plans and dreams of yesteryear. They will make yourself whole in concept and energy, but not in the practical nature of life itself. So in other words, that you will, you may have a fully fleshed out idea of what it is you want to create, right? And you may feel like all your energy is aligned to that thing that you want to create. But if it came without harmony, without that balance internal, if it didn't, you didn't leave with the divine feminine, that it, it won't yield practical results, that it, it will not be able to share, like it's, it basically, you might end up on the wrong path. It might go in the wrong way, that it won't lead the practical results that you're looking for. It will manifest as it will in the world which provides itself. So the world is here for us and yields for you a truth, a truth about who you are and what you desire and what you feel. In other words, what we are inside is what we create outside of us. It's what the world around us becomes. They say these will always remain in your lifetime, but the effectuality will change or yeah, the effectuality will change and this cannot be avoided. So they're saying is they're saying it will still, the world will still be a reflection of what you are inside, but what it will reflect is imbalance. It won't show you the smoothly, like in the past, the world was imbalanced. And so we could create specifically from the masculine and people could get ahead doing that. And they're saying in the new world, as the world shifts into balance, that won't work anymore, right? Because you'll be working super, super hard, hard in the wrong direction in something that is not connected to the light. It'll feel like you're always moving uphill. And that's the difference, I think. Yeah, that's how I perceive it. All right, next they say, thus we say, as you reached the turning point for humanity, and uh, as you reach the turning point for humanity and sense the change upon the horizon and feel the self leaning in, in a desire for something that is not this, so here's their identifying that where we are right now <laughs> is that we're saying, oh, you know what? I want something that's like it's an, especially if you are in a difficult circumstance right now and you're like, you know what? I just want change. This is that whole idea. Just bring me change. I want something that isn't this. I want something else. And they're saying, this is, this is where we are leaning in right now is from, and this is speaking to humans at large, like what motivates us to move forward. It is, I want change. I want something new without really thinking about what new is and how the, what the change feels like to get through it. Right. And they say, and seek in the respite of something else or in the respite of something else, a transition that proves your own justice. And this is such a heavy line that, right? So, so they're saying at the moment, human nature is to desire change. And what we want in that change is something that proves us right, right? We want the change to be aligned with our beliefs. Even if those beliefs are flawed, <laughs> even if those beliefs are based in our own wounds, we want a change that is aligned with what we think it should be, right? And, and so that a transition that proves your own justice, to be a judge, is to do what is just, what is fair. We want it to be what we think is fair, what we think is right. So this is, this is human nature to come into this shift with this perception. And I think there's no, there's no judgment about that. It's just the acknowledgement of who we are as humans that, that, uh, that, yeah, that it, it, we want something to sweep us away and to make it better and to make it align with what we think it should be. And they say, we say those temptations fall away and you are left with the curmudgeons of your better nature. So when we get change and it's not exactly what we envisioned, then we are left with the curmudgeons of our better nature, which is ill-tempered is what they mean. Curmudgeon is ill-tempered, bad mood. <laughs> so we get grumpy, basically. We don't get what we think it should be right away, and we get grumpy. 
Then they say, a sense of yourselves as having lost something and wishing to go back. Feeling that within these parts of this shift in your perception, there must be something like it was, and perhaps all can return to a semblance of normalcy. So they're describing this phase, this pause period, that that will be the temptation to say, you know what, where is it around me that I can kind of just start to sweep up and pretend it never happened? They go on to say, um, uh, we would hold the self in comfort and dialogue with spirit and pray into you each to hold on to the depth of your own knowing. So this is the critical part, is they're saying in that time, right in this time is when we need to pull on our inner resources and they are gonna be helping. They are gonna be holding us in comfort. They're gonna be dialoguing with us in spirit. They're gonna be praying into us. What I love about that is they're saying they're giving us real support. They're breathing into us. They're not just saying it out there. They're literally breathing their breath into us helping us in this transition period, recognizing that it won't be easy for us, that there is going to be a, a tsunami of blowback from our own humanity, from our own inner nature, telling us, go back to the way it was, this is hard. <laughs> they're saying, nope, just let this happen and they're gonna be supporting us. They're saying, hold on during this time period, hold on to our, what, we, what we have learned, right? They say to keep for yourself on guard against the desire to slump and return to what was, to hold the stead and maintain your grip upon what is new and stay within reach of ourselves. They said the comfort is there. We just have to hold on, hold on to what we know is true in our, in, in our like deep down what we know is true and hold on to them and they are gonna be helping us, breathing into us, supporting us through this process. They go on to say, do not deny the force of the gale that returns to you. So, so, uh, like, so in other words, the, this heart, the feeling, they said, don't deny the feeling of the desire to give up and go back to the way things were. They say that draw you backward into its reach, but instead accept that you are this, that you have need for comfort, that you seek and desire a return, but do not yield. So there's, there's nothing wrong with admitting, right? Yeah, you know what? I, that would be really, really nice to whatever the comfort is that you're missing, to have that back again. They say, but do not yield. To admit, not defeat, but simply renew your faith in the truth of what you are and become like ourselves, merging with that higher power that is your own light. So it feels like this is like the moment. <laughs> like when we have this pause, if we, the temptation will be to turn back because it's, it's challenging or it's the absence of things, it's the unknown. And they're saying when we reach the unknown, don't be confused, don't lose our way in the darkness. Instead, see that as the pause that it is and recognize that that is the, in the absence is when we can hear them most clearly. And so they're saying this is the moment to lean in, to turn towards them, right? To recognize that in the absence of all that other stuff, all of a sudden we can hear them. Right? And they're there, they're helping us, right? They say, come, it says, I love this, love, love, love this next line, this next paragraph. They say, um, uh, they say, come into the depth of the experience, come higher and farther than you previously knew. It is there to be found the truth that you seek. So this is the moment. Like when we get to this feeling, the desire to say, well, okay, I'm done. <laughs> that is the moment to recognize you've reached the pause. And to say, okay, this is the moment when I'm in the absence, when I'm in this unknown, when I can open up further and I can lean in deeper, come into the depth of the experience, right? Come higher and farther than you previously knew. It is there to be found the truth that you seek. The desire will be revealed when the time has come for you to plunge into the darkness of your own fruition, right? This is what this is. It is not a loss. It is in that darkness comes the fruition. And you think about that, like the whole metaphor of the caterpillar and the butterfly, the caterpillar turns to muck, to goo, and then it becomes the butterfly. So that period of, the period of change is ambiguous and humans don't like ambiguity and it's scary, but it is in that, that we find like plunge into that darkness of your own fruition and to feel the self carried forward from here. In other words, all we have to do is turn into it and they will carry us. So, so it's just the choice. We have to make the choice, right? And that I love because that is the blending of the divine masculine and the divine feminine. It is hearing, feeling the call, understanding this is the way, turn into the unknown and then allowing the masculine to come in and to help make that choice, to say, yes, we're committing to this path. 
right so it's it is this is this is the task for us not an easy one but in if we can just get past our human nature and recognize that comfort is not what we want right now what we want is this massive shift in human consciousness and it is unknown and that will scare us and it's going to be okay they're telling us not only is it going to be okay but we are going to be moved as they said higher and farther than we've ever been right they say specifically that we will be come higher and farther than you previously knew it is there to be found the truth that you seek right the desire will be revealed when the time has come for you to plunge into the darkness of your own fruition so the moment we feel that desire to go back to the way things were that is the moment to plunge into the darkness of our fruition and then feel ourselves carried from there so that i find to be a beautiful big giant signpost for us to be watching for all right they, they go on to say there is space yet so in the time that we're in right now they're saying there is space yet to be endeavored to be broken to be left behind so, so there's things that there's work to be done right now, they're saying. They're saying there is space yet for all that is wreckage to be counted. So all the hardship that you've been through, there's time right now for us to go through it and to excavate it for the beauty in that experience, for all the knowledge that we can glean from that experience, to heal as much as we can possibly heal. They say there is space yet for all to be healed, all misery to be let go of. Thus, we hold you now in this point of transition and allow you the grace and time to yield. So it is that idea of yielding to our inner turmoil, to the inner stuff that we need to go through. Give us the grace and time to yield to that, to go through it, to experience the emotion, to no longer force it down, but to, to yield, to let it come out and to be experienced and to learn from that emotion. Yeah, to feel that you are in the presence of something greater than what you are, which is yourself alone. And by that, it is, it is saying that we're, better than, we're bigger than just this, bigger than just this life, just this moment, we are our self alone, which means higher self, all that is, oneness, the divine, we are everything, right? Yeah, they're saying, which is yourself alone, that you are all, you are everything, right? Yeah, so I find this, like I said, this is a great big giant, this is like pointer sign saying, this is the way they're trying to give us now before we're in it, before we're in that period where we can't hear them because it's we're in the period of saying oh gosh that was tough i don't want it anymore <laughs> and tough can be a lot of different things tough can be just the endless parade of bad news it can be this stretch of the hottest days the planet has ever seen right it can be the crazy mass violence that we're having around the planet right it can be anything anything that makes you feel like enough too much you know any moment that you say i am done like i don't want this take me back that's the moment they say, turn, see the big signpost, plunge into your own fruition, into the trust of what you already know. And they say, they will carry. If you lean in, if you fall, like they said in the very beginning, right? And fall down into the graceful belonging with one another. All we have to do is turn and fall. And they will literally carry us from there. It's just that we have to make the choice to do it, right? We have to turn away from the desire for what was, for the comfort, and turn into the change yeah wow right it's heavy it's big and it's awesome it's encouraging it's beautiful and it, it's only scary because of the fact that humans even though we think we want change because we think oh this is bad i want something else when we actually get it we don't like it <laughs> so it's just because we are inherently afraid of change and that's natural and they're saying don't don't reject that about ourselves embrace it and say yeah this is like love me i'm human and i fear change you know it's okay but to recognize it and then to make the choice anyways to turn into what we don't know yeah yeah all right you're saying such a beautiful message release and surrender and trust 100 percent. yeah thanks donna yeah absolutely and uh you're saying um where are we you're saying the well the angels found a very good interpreter i would just go huh <laughs> thank you karen does it make more sense now i hope i mean like i think now with that in mind if you go back and listen to it again i think you'll just i think you'll get it right the first time you know when you when you listen to it again because it, it just takes a minute to break it down but i i agree when i first heard this message i was like what are they saying so it took me a little time yeah um uh, and then uh, carrie says living in an endless stream of bad news and trying to observe to recognize what it is trying to lead me to it isn't clear to me by any measure yeah 100 percent, carrie 
I really, I, I, and I think so many people can resonate with what you're saying that there is, it's, it's definitely a very, very crunchy time. And that in, and there are some people around the world who are deep in the throes of massive upheaval. And then there's the rest of us that are, are hearing, you know, all the craziness around the world. So yeah, there's no question. Um, and you're saying, yes, thank you. Plus uh, you toned down the fear element, which is great. Thank you, Karen. I'm super glad. That's great. That's great. Yeah. And I don't think, I mean, I think the fear, like we can get carried away by the fear. And I think that is the moment when we, if we let it get the best of us, that is a conversation with ha we're having inside of us. When we get into our fear mode, we're having a conversation about, wow, things are going to get worse, right? Oh my gosh, I can't handle this. Like that's fear. And, and the truth is you can handle it. And I think it is that moment of just finding your strength, remembering that's why they, they refer back to all the time here about, we forget that we're eternal. We forget who we really are, that we are creators, that we create our experience. We get lost into, how do they describe it? This, this fleeting, the perception of themselves is fleeting. We forget, and that's our fear. And so we just have to, when that happens, just say, okay, I love myself through this. I love the fact that I'm scared. I love the fact that I want to go back I recognize that that's a natural and, and okay feeling because of course, because it's familiar and we have, we're living in soft fleshy bodies that can be eaten by dinosaurs or whatever. And so of course you want to stay in the safety in the cave behind the rock, whatever it is, you know, and that's deeply ingrained in us. And it doesn't matter how evolved we get, right? That, that until we get to a space where we are able to fully move into this this higher state of being this harmony where we i think evolve beyond the pull of human nature and we we change it changes us yeah i think that's kind of what they're saying um uh and you're saying uh oh thank you so much sherry that's really sweet of you thank you um and uh He's saying, awesome. Thank you. Love it. I love this message too. I really do. You're saying, miss my que our question. Look above, please. Oh, yes. See, I'll try to see it. I'll go back to that for sure. You're saying, awesome message um, uh, and warning of what we are going th to go through. It is definitely letting us know, like they don't sugarcoat it. You know what I mean? That it's going to be, and I think what they're saying is like, be aware that it's emotionally hard. Like what matters is how we feel. So whether or not it affects you in a physical way, it's emotionally challenging. And that's super important. Like we don't, we don't want to, to make it less important if it, if it just because you're not, you're not having, if your house hasn't blown down, right? If your life looks the same, but you feel it deeply, it is impactful, right? Trauma is emotional. Um, you say soft fleshy that can be eaten by dinosaurs. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you for that. I was raised in fear mode, so I go there easy, but trying to reprogram my thinking. That is awesome. Grateful to be part of this group. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Kathy. You're saying, thanks, Anne. Always, I'll be in touch soon. Awesome. Yeah, great, Brandy. We got work to do. And then uh, let me go back and find your question, Teresa. Um, uh, you're saying... Uh, let me find it. I'm sorry. Here it is. It sounds, uh, it almost sounds like we are going to be war torn. Is that too extreme to imagine this? I'm just going to understand this one. They didn't talk about the, like in terms of what the specific events of, of the world are going to be. Um, but they have in other messages, they've talked about that and, and the things that could happen, the things that they have talked about and given things change, everything is an energy and energies can be expressed in different ways. Um, but they have talked about, uh, the specific, one specific, I guess people would call it a timeline, one specific pattern that could emerge is that the U.S. separates, that there's, there's big economic upheaval, the U.S. separates, there could be the death of a leader, and we, we divide, not, but the U.S. would not divide apparently by civil, there wouldn't be war, it would be by along lines of ideology. So it would almost be by choice. So there might be some scuffles, like little bits of fighting, but not a big civil war, which is wonderful news from my perspective. Less war is good. But then, unfortunately, if the U.S. has its eye, it does not have its eye on the ball, then if we are so busy with our own stuff, then that would open the door for China to take Taiwan. And then what they said at one point was if that would happen, then Japan would rally the world against China. And that would open up the door towards a much larger conflict. And that is not the only avenue towards a, a bigger war. Um, but yeah, but the understanding is that there would be a, uh, a much larger war. 
and that if that happens that is supposed to lead us to a place where like we in the midst of all that war in the midst of all the chaos there is some sort of what they've described as the earth rift so and it could it could show up differently i'd like to make space for things to evolve and change but what they have said is that there would be an earth rift which i believe is in the indian ocean which then is heard around the world which impacts people it's and the impact from what i understand is not immediate it is gradually people realize it has a global impact in the beginning it seems like a local impact but it becomes a global impact and that coupled with the war makes everybody realize what are we fighting about this is dumb like stop fighting and we uh, that leads us into a place where people are able to come together in a way like we've never done before and that i think is my understanding of how things evolve and that could be it could come about differently it could and and if it, it does come about differently, I hope that different doesn't mean we, we don't go through it, right? I hope we take advantage of this opportunity to evolve. I hope that humanity is able to ride out this shift and make the shift and change. Like, they're, they're, like so much is aligned to help us, right? So I hope we do. And, and they've said we're already there. The angels said we've made the shift and they see the next step and we are there. We're already in it. So if I use them and I'm saying that and they're just nudging me being like, they're like, don't say that. <laughs> like, we see you. You're already here. You're going to make it. We're going to make it. So, <laughs> so, um, but how we get there, it could change and evolve. But that is my understanding. So I hope that helps. And as we talk about the difficult things on the horizon, the things that bring me comfort are to remember that not everything happens everywhere. That wherever you are, there will be circumstances that evolve around you specifically that allow you to experience something that maybe is is available to you because you are in that opened and allowing state right you can be in the middle of chaos and still be in a space of peace and love um and and like i said not everything happens everywhere so life will go on like we will continue to go on and then life will get exponentially better so that's what we're all working towards is exponentially better all right, so I hope that answered the question, Teresa. So let me know if I missed it, but I think that was your question. He says, yeah, thank you, yes, I was sensing it was larger. I believe we can still create our own bubble with the angels around us. Yes, I agree. And you're saying, thank you. And so when, uh, when we have these big moments of feeling like I'm done with this, that is our cue to lean in and take the cool, the plunge. Well, exactly, yeah, that's exactly right, yeah. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. Super awesome to share this message with you. And thank you so much for the dialogue. I really feel like it adds so much to our understanding and to our ability to process and hold the energy for this. So thank you very much. Sending you guys lots of love. And I'll see you again next Friday live. Bye, you guys.